good afternoon, everyone. And uh, first of all, Lauri, thank you very much for the invitation. Very much appreciated. Uh, my name is Francesco Barbato. I work for the European Commission in DigiConnect in a unit that is uh, called uh, cybersecurity and uh, capacity building. Uh, what I would like to do here, uh, as Lauri said, is give a little bit of an introduction to this uh, funding round uh, that Lauri will go into the nitty gritty of a bit later after my presentation and also give some context uh, on the European Cybersecurity Competence Center and uh, give a few information about that. Um, I think you may have heard already something maybe at the beginning of this, uh, of this meeting uh, when the, the NCC Estonia was uh, in introduced itself, hopefully. If not, uh, I will hopefully give you some fresh information here, otherwise you will bear with me. And then I will uh, explain a few things about, uh, general things about the Digital Euro program Again, to introduce a little bit the topics that Lauri will, will, explain later, will explain later on. So first thing first, the Cybersecurity Competence Center and Network. So what is this? So many of you know that uh, uh, the, the European Commission has uh, some agencies that manages uh, certain thematics uh, programs. Uh, and uh, um, we recently set up, uh, if you want, a new EU body, a sort of an agency, which is called European Cybersecurity Competence Center, which is based in Bucharest. So this is a new initiative uh, that we are doing together with the, with the member states to basically pool resources, all the resources around cybersecurity and make the most out of it. So uh, the European Cybersecurity Competence Center will manage the funding from uh, Digital Europe and the Horizon Europe programs, uh, but also uh, you want to support joint investments uh, with the member states and industry as I said, to pull uh, all the capacity that we have in Europe, uh, again, such a very important uh, and off topic uh, politically and practically. Uh, when doing so, actually, we're doing it a little bit in a different fashion than you know, other experiences that are out there for uh, European, European agencies. In particular, as I said, this is a joint initiative with, with the member states, and the member states are helping out, helping out reaching out uh, the goals of the Competence Centre, with national nodes that we call the uh, national coordination centers. So these are basically entities uh, that are present in, in each member states that function, to function not only as a contact point, uh, as a, let's say, trade union between the, uh, the competence center and, uh, and the member states, but also they have a couple of very important tasks amongst many that, is, uh, uh, that are to uh, interact with the community of cybersecurity stakeholders. And uh, the interactions uh, is uh, in, uh, intended to be bilateral. So we would like, you know, through them, to pass all the information about the programs in a way that we are doing, starting to do today, for example, with the info days like this, uh, so that we explain uh, to the to the real uh, uh, to, the, to the stakeholders that you know will be really participating in our in our funding calls, uh, the the exact scope of the calls, uh, what we're looking for. Uh, but also, uh, you know, we would like to uh, gather information from the community of stakeholders uh, to uh, design the future uh, funding programs uh, and topics uh, of the, uh, the, the Cybersecurity Competence Center will manage. So this is particularly important uh, because all the actions that we deploy are supposed to increase the resilience of uh, Europe in terms of cybersecurity. And this is, uh, uh, and this is achieved uh, when uh, all the various stakeholders uh, that we're trying to coordinate here and that we're trying to put together and that we're trying to interact with will be secure. So, and this is quite an ambitious, uh, uh, an ambitious goal that we have. And uh, you know, everybody needs, uh, needs to play their own part uh, when it comes to cybersecurity. As, uh, as you, you may have heard you know, many times, uh, you know, we are as secure as the weakest link. So we are trying with different actions, which are policy oriented, but also funding oriented, to strengthen all the various links of the uh, cybersecurity value chains. And here, all the links are basically the community members and uh, the infrastructure that they operate. And uh, this is why we are targeting with, the, with this exercise of the Cybersecurity Competence Center, uh, a very wide variety uh, of community uh, that is large, diverse, and actually it encompasses uh, uh, all different, uh, uh, at all different levels. So from uh, from the from the academia to the industry, but also to the security to the cybersecurity developers, but also to the users of cybersecurity, and we're trying to do it also in all sectors, you know, in all verticals, and uh, we are trying to target you know synergies between uh, civilian and defense spheres as well. Now a little bit more on the network of the national coordination centers. As I said, there was going to be one per member states, 
they will promote the participation uh, in projects, also in cross-border projects of the cybersecurity stakeholders. Um, they will uh, set up uh, um, uh, national capacity building and they will uh, link with existing European uh, initiatives. Uh, but also, very importantly, one thing that they can do, here you see in the second block, they may receive or pass you funding directly. So not only passing information, you know, and I make sure that everybody understands what the scope of the EU funding programs uh, uh, are, but also uh, through some very particular actions, which we call the financial support to third parties, uh, but sometimes also known as cascading grants, uh, they are actually able uh, to distribute uh, seed funding in the in the in the amount uh, around uh, sixty thousand to one hundred thousand euro through um, this particular scheme to stakeholders. Um, and um, this is done typically uh, in a different fashion than is done in uh, the large collaborative pro pro projects uh, uh, that we fund through Horizon Europe, uh, but also through, through that, uh, by cutting some red tape. So these are supposed to be actions which are faster, for which there is a little bit less red tape uh, to, to access. And uh, they can be quite impactful, actually, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of, um, in, in terms of result that can, the results, uh, the results can, can, that can be achieved. Uh, this is particularly true because sometimes, you know, uh, some stakeholders don't really need uh, a lot of money to, to perform certain uh, certain tasks, such, such as cybersecurity audits, uh, assessing their own cybersecurity needs, and uh, these kind of things can be done with with the funding around this level that uh, that I just described. So this is a powerful tool that we add that we're adding in addition to the topics that will be presented later on by by Laura. Um, then, uh, again, a word on the cybersecurity competence community. As I said, it's very important uh, because we believe that it's only through the interactions with the community that we can achieve better results. And it's only with the, with the feedback that we get and input that we get from the cybersecurity competence community that we can design uh, better funding programs, that we can update uh, the research uh, and innovation agenda of the center in a more meaningful way. So all this uh, input will be collected uh, by the national coordination centers and will, go, uh, and will be shared at European level with everybody else, so with all the other NCCs, through uh, the activities of the, the competence center. Now, so far for the competence center. Now, if you want to say a few words about Digital Europe. This is a new program, and the topics that we, you will hear later on are part of Digi the Digital Europe program. Uh, being new, uh, there are uh, some explanations that are, that are still needed. Uh, it is new and uh, there are uh, still some you know, things that are a bit unknown uh, because it's a different program. First of all, this is not about research. So this is about deployment and uptake. So to be very clear, uh, if your scope is to um, uh, receive uh, funding for performing research actions, uh, this is not the place. That place is Horizon Europe. So here, the programs are designed in a very clear-cut fashion and in a complementary fashion. So again, uh, this is about uh, deployment and uptake. Uh, we cover not only cybersecurity, of course, but we cover other verticals, such as high-performance computing, artificial intelligence, uh, advanced digital skills, that are you know, an, an issue that is uh, very, uh, uh, very important across all uh, digital topics. Uh, but then we also have some other uh, kind of horizontal actions, uh, like such as the digital innovation hubs, uh, to which uh, the, the work of the, the national coordination centers uh, is actually quite important, because they will also have to bridge some out the activities of digital innovation hubs, where cybersecurity is part of their own operations as well. Um, currently, we have two calls that are open: one with a submission deadline at the very beginning of July, so very soon and the other one with a submission deadline at the end of September. So a little bit more time to prepare the project proposals. A few words on the first call that is open uh, until the beginning of July. This is actually the reopening uh, of a call uh, that we uh, open, uh, that we closed uh, in, in February and uh, recently evaluated. So it turns out that uh, there, is, there were still budget, some, there were still some budget left over in the, in the call. So we decided to reopen uh, three topics. Uh, um, for which uh, we hope to receive, we still hope to receive proposals. We decided that even, you know, even you know, if the deadline would have been short, we would have known that to still make the budget available to stakeholders. To stakeholders, um, the reason why uh, these deadlines uh, are so short is because uh, that budget needs to be consumed uh, because of budgetary reasons uh, by the end of the year, which means that the grants resulting from these calls needs to be signed by the end of this year. 
and hence the very short deadline. So different story from the, the second block here that you see in that call. So that is budget from the 2023 work program. So we still have, we still have time to sign the grants next year. Uh, now, uh, Lauri will give you the details uh, of all these various topics. Uh, here, what I would like to do, again, is provide some, uh, some important context. Um, one important additional document that you have to look at, uh, in addition to the work program, is the call document. Uh, not very much fantasy in the naming convention, if you want, but uh, uh, this is a document that goes in addition to the work program and that was not present in Horizon Europe. So this document explains a little bit better a few issues that you need to be aware of when preparing a project proposal, such as the admissibility and eligibility, the financial and operational capacities that are required, but also the evaluation procedures and uh, all the annexes that you will need to provide together with your project proposal, such as the ethical issues or the security issues. So a little bit of help for the applicants. So please, if you intend to submit a, um, a project proposal to the debt call, don't forget to look at the call document, which is available on the uh, funding and tendering portal of the union, exactly at the same place where you find the entry point to the various to the various topics. Uh, as I said, the, um, the the document, the call document, also provides some information on the evaluation procedure, which I think is very important that you bear in mind when you if and when you prepare a project proposal. So not only it's important uh, to provide the right technical detail to address the objectives of the call. But it's important that you bear in mind also how you're evaluated when uh, uh, your peers uh, will uh, will read will read your proposal and you know judge on the base of base judge on the base of its merits the, var the various proposals. Okay, just a step backwards. Uh, the evaluation of Horizon uh, of Horizon Europe and digital Europe programs they are peer-reviewed processes, so there will be real human reading your proposals. Um, the first award the first award criteria is the relevance. And uh, you need to be demonstrating that, of course, uh, you are aligned and you stick to the project, to the objectives uh, uh, and the activities that are, that are proposed by the, by, the, by the topics, by the various topics, or at least by the one that you will apply for. And that also you are able to demonstrate that you contribute to the long-term policy objectives that we have as a union um, in terms of cybersecurity. So how does your project fit in and how does it contribute? So uh, for this, it's important that you understand a little bit the, the policy context. Uh, and it's, um, it's really, really uh, interesting to see actually how the different projects will contribute to that. So imagine that we, you know, you're requesting funding to, this, uh, to, this, um, to these various topics. Uh, you're not, all, not only making a request for yourself, but with your project, if funded, uh, you will contribute uh, to, the, to the policy implementations of the various cybersecurity uh, policies of the union. So very important that you keep this in mind. Uh, then the second award criteria is implementation, where you will be judged against the maturity of your, of your action, which means uh, that we'd like to see how clear your ideas are in terms of implementation plan, what capacity you can deploy for doing that, uh, what experience uh, the applicants, uh, the people that are involved or the consortium partners uh, have. So very important that you provide details about this and that you don't take uh, things for granted. Uh, these are competitive evaluations, uh, and uh, it's important that you do uh, an effort uh, to explain uh, the evaluators, uh, uh, you know, uh, how mature your idea is. Exactly for the reasons that I was explaining at the beginning, this is about, this is about uh, uh, deployment and uptake. And if your proposal is not mature enough, or again, you know, to again to go to the previous comment, uh, the actions that you propose are too close to research. Uh, this is a little bit of a problem. So it's important that you demonstrate the opposite, that you want to uptake and deploy whatever things you would propose, and that you're fit for purpose for implementing. And the third one uh, is impact. And uh, as I was saying before, uh, we would like you to contribute, yes, to the longer term policy, policy uh, objectives of the union, but it's important that you understand what kind of impact and what kind of difference you will make with your own project. So you need to know that and you need to demonstrate and you need to explain what kind of impact uh, you would like to have. Um, again, the details are very important. The lessons learned from previous calls uh, still show us that uh, there is a bit of a lack of, uh, of understanding of uh, how details you need to be in project proposals. Uh, well, in case of doubt, the more details, the better, so that you help uh, the people that will be reading uh, your proposals to understand what you want to do and how and what impact you will achieve. Uh, then also, please spend some time in uh, looking at some important details, uh, 
such as what personal costs uh, uh, are uh, allowed, what subcontracting costs are allowed, what kind of purchase costs, purchase costs are allowed, and uh, what kind of uh, financial support are what kind of conditions uh, there are for financial support to third parties. So not only we implement this scheme with the NCCs, as I was explaining before, but uh, this is also applicable uh, to some of the topics that will be, that will be presented later. So uh, if uh, uh, you are going to apply for such a scheme, it's important that you understand the nitty gritty of it and you, pre you present uh, appropriate planning for it. Then uh, I would like to thank you. So this is the introduction that I wanted to make. And uh, I hope this has provided some uh, some context uh, to the presentation that will uh, that will follow up later. On. So thank you very much, and uh, Lauri, I thank you for the invitation again. I hope this has been useful. Thank you, Francesco. Thank you so much for for being there and uh, for uh, telling us these things. Uh, I'll take it from here, and uh, we'll see you some in some other context. All right. All right. So thank you very much, and uh, good luck. Good luck to you all if you plan to apply for uh, digital Europe codes. All right. Thank you. Bye.